Hi, welcome to Fiber Chats. My name is Irina. I'm the host here. My guest today comes from Ecuador, Annie Fran from Quito Quilts. Hi, welcome to my channel. Hey, Irina from Fiber Chats. Good to be here. Thank you. So you caught my eye with all your dance moves on Instagram. <laughs> and That's I'll so tell you why. Because to me, like long arm is very involved like when I'm looking at this right when I'm watching you work I'm like oh my god how can she even maneuver so fast because my eyes don't move fast enough to see all the like twiggly lines that you manage to create with your machine and you dancing on top of it right <laughs> tell me how you got so comfortable with long arm what's your story like how did it all start for you um, it's, it's pretty new for me. Um, like this long arm I've had for a year, so I'm still learning and practicing a lot. Um, it's, it's pretty solitary. So I'm alone <laughs> and doing long arm. I mean, you're pretty much alone the whole time. And, and the dancing bit is, is for me to have fun and, and try to spread that joy um, and, and yeah, it helps me to, to, for the, have fun during the process. It is. Yeah. I mean, you have to put your long arm on a certain, um, setting so that it doesn't keep going while I'm doing some, some dance moves, but um, I'm mastering, I'm trying to master that. <laughs> well, how did you start with quilting? Like, how did you decide to give quilting a try? Sure. Like I started quilting actually in 2010. So a long time ago. Um, on a domestic machine, I, I I think it was before I knew a lot about you know YouTube and and social media, and I was like, ooh, I'm gonna try quilting, like I'm gonna bring it back, like it's gonna be cool again, and I, and I quilted at you know my house for like a year, uh, making some quilts for friends, and then I when I moved to Ecuador, um, I did buy a, a domestic machine when I moved here in 2011. So I'd only quilted a year. I moved here and uh, to Ecuador and bought a machine, but only did a few quilts and put it aside for like 10 years. And so then when I got back into it um, in 20, in 2020, 2021, yeah, 2021, during the pandemic. Yeah. So um, bought a, mach a new machine and, and for a year used, I found a, a hoop frame um, and a domestic machine here, which is very rare because there's not much quilting at all. And I, this uh, sewing machine place wanted to sell it because I don't think anyone, and I happened to see it and I had to have it. And so I, in a hoop frame is a smaller frame. It's only like five foot uh, long. And um, I used it for a year and then I knew I loved it and needed a bigger machine and a bigger frame. And, and that is to get those things here in Ecuador, you know, you have to import and we have a very high tax on anything imported is a 42% tax. Wow. And so I, I had to strategically find one that was a little cheaper and, you know, that I could justify spending uh, that much money. But yeah, I, I bought that in 2022. So, so a year of using that machine. Well, you don't do that as your full-time job, right? This is no, your side. I wish. <laughs> Well, how how much quilting means to you? Like what part of your life is it? Um, yeah, so I I'm a professor. Um, and so I teach at the university. And then when I'm not teaching, I am quilting in the mornings and in the evenings and thinking about quilting though, <laughs> during the day. Um, and I, you know, my dream is to, I would love to to quilt full time, but it's just not an option here. We don't have very many quilters. There's a handful of, of uh, women that quilt here, maybe 10, I would say, in the city I live. And then in another city, Cuenca, Ecuador, there's another 10 or 15 quilters. Um, shout out to the quilters of Ecuador, because yeah, I'm there only, there's maybe two people with long arms in the whole country. And so I'm one of them. Is that like empowering to be with the long arm? Yeah. <laughs> um, at first, when I first bought the hoop frame, um, I guess these women had kept an eye on this machine and frame and they wanted to know who bought it. And so the store told them my name and number and they immediately called. 
like, oh, we want you to quilt for us. And I'm like, whoa, I've never quilted on it yet. Let me practice a little bit. And so it was pretty immediate that um, they they wanted to know who I was. And and um, so now they send me their quilts. Yeah, it's not a lot of quilts, so it's nothing I could do full time. But I do enjoy uh, quilting their quilts. Well, being a professor, you have certain approach to learning, I'm sure. How did you approach learning how to quilt? Good question. I wanted and I still want to. I take every class that I can. Um and, and there have been a few that have been extremely helpful um, and it's all been online. Um, so that's been great. Um, I've, I've taken classes and, and so for me, yeah, that education and that learning is super important. I do learn from YouTube and things like that, but the actual classes I have taken have been amazing. I took a beginning class with um, Holly Ann Knight of String and Story. And then um, with Susan Smith of Stitched by Susan, her freehand masterclass. And then Beth Ann Nemish, teach, I've taken two classes with her on feathers and um, botanicals. And so, yeah, edu the education component is, is pretty important. And that's how I keep improving is taking classes. Of course, I would love to come to the U.S. and take some hands-on, um, but it hasn't happened yet. Right. Well, when you think of quilts, right, like, or, or let's say when I think of quilts, like the first thing that springs to mind is like Amish quilts. Mm -hmm. Think like historical, like very planned, very like classical, basically in its making. What's quilts to you? Like how, how did you start and where is, where are you now? Like when it comes to planning the quilt? So I don't make a lot of quilts, like piecing the quilts. I mean, like there's one behind me that I've pieced and that was uh, more, it's more modern. So I enjoy the modern improv um, when I make a quilt. Um, but I love to, the most of the quilts that I do the quilting for though are more traditional. And um, recently, I think the most, I don't know, the coolest quilt um, that I recently got was from 1870. And it was a woman who has lived in Ecuador for a long time from the United States. And it was her great, great, great grandma's quilt. And it was just so amazing to be able to, I don't know, touch it. And, you know, and it was, there were parts, you know, that had been ripped and falling apart and, you know, having to repair that. And then finding like little tiny piece of paper underneath that was from 1870. It just blew my mind. Right. And I it was like, I just don't want to hurt her quilt. Right. Um, and to do it justice. And it was just amazing. The woman had um, written her name on it and and to highlight the two two places she had signed her quilt. And so from 1870, that was that was super impressive. Um, but for me, yeah, quilts are quilts. I, I like traditional. I like modern um, when I'm making them, though, more modern and improv. Um, yeah. And I like basically, Irina, I love to try everything. And so um I want to try. So I want to try everything because it's there's but there's too much. Right. So first, I want to know, can I do it? And then second, did I enjoy it? So, for example, I've tried paper, uh, foundation paper piecing. I did, you know, one block. And I was like, it was OK. I did it. Then I did some English paper piecing. I did it, but I didn't like super enjoy it. And then so like I just want to try everything. Right. I want to try applique. I want to try. But you know, my, my focus is the longer I'm quilting. But I also want to try it everything. And in fact, I've never knitted. Um, knitting is, is pretty popular here, though. My mother-in-law knits a lot and I get lots of scarves and lots of hats. Um, I've never tried it. Um, but you posted a picture the other day from the Vogue Knitting Live of, I think his name was Esteve or from Barcelona. It was like blue and green sleeves. And I that one blew my mind. I know, like, he's like one of the most brilliant knitwear designers like, that wow. I, I know. I was so happy to meet him in person this time. It was like, this it was that, amazing. That, amazing that, reunion. that sweater, I was like, okay, now maybe I should try knitting. Like that was just mind blowing. So thank you for posting that. Um, I haven't tried uh, knitting uh, yet. <laughs> well, when you, when you plan a quilt, right? Like, and we'll get back to the long arm. Okay. A lot of questions about that, but like, when you think about quilts, do you try to tell a story? Ooh. Good question. I mean, I think quilts can tell a story, sure. Um, 
I made one recently. So I do some practice quilts um, and I wanted to see if I could applique on the long arm, which I did. Um, and it was um, a picture I have it here is a picture of my logo, which is, hold on, let me get it the right way. So it is, um, really I, I'm practicing my long arm, but I put together this, um, and so telling a story, then it's telling the story of, of Matad del Mundo, which is the statue here at the equator, and then the little raindrops because, you know, rainy season. <laughs> that, oh. I, I don't know if that answers your question, but quilts can definitely tell a story. Um, yeah, just like tattoos tell a story, right? I, I think. <laughs> right. No, it's like, to me, that's most interesting thing, because when you look at quilt, you almost like ask yourself what the person was trying to tell you, like, right, what what place they were in, like, what influenced them. And I wonder, like, if you think Ecuadorian quilters have different story from, like, Amish quilters just because where right. they are, like. No, I see them, I see them doing traditional U.S. Um, blocks here, I think, um, yeah. I haven't seen anything yet that was like super Ecuadorian, but I do want to try that though, because I do have some Ecuadorian um, uh, fabric that's that's used here. And so I haven't done it yet. Well, let's talk about your fabric stash, right? Like I always like to ask how did that start and where did it grow into? Like what's, what's your fabric stash looks like now? It's pretty, okay. So it's pretty limited. I have a big um, tub full of, of fabric um, buying fabric here in Ecuador is, is challenging for, for quilting, um, because we have not a lot of hundred percent cotton fabric and the, the hundred percent cotton is imported. So either from the United States or from Brazil and Spain. Um, so it's a little bit more expensive and it's very limited in, in the selection. Um, so I do bring, when I go to the U S I do bring back lots of uh, fabric and thread, um, and so, yeah, it's limited in our quilting. Um, I even thread I can't get here that that I need for my long arm, so I have to import. Um, so that part is challenging, but I feel like it's something that I love so much that that you know I just make it happen. Right. So when you do the long arm, you always show the quilts from the back. <laughs> I find it like amazing because to me this is like almost like fair aisle meeting when people start showing the inside floats the fabric that it creates and like when you think about long arm it's basically to like bind the top layer and the uh the middle of it and the and the bottom layer right so the top layer is what everybody would see right so you but know, right. the back you get to see the actual uh designs where sometimes those get lost in the front and so as the as the quilter, you know, I think the bags look the coolest. <laughs> well, how do you decide what kind of design you're going to use for the quilt? Like, how do you make that decision? Yeah, that's tough. It depends on um, what the client is looking for. Um, you know, there's different types. There's all over, same design, just all over, edge to edge. Um, or there's you know, like custom quilting, which is different designs. Maybe I had a, a quilt recently. It was like 34 blocks and the, and the lady wanted a different design in each block, <laughs> but, but that's the only direction she gave me. So then I'm like, Oh, I'm running out of ideas for each block. Um, so it really depends on the client, uh, what they're looking for, what goes best with that quilt. Tell me like the amount of prep that goes before the machine starts moving. How the long does it you, you take you to just like set everything up? It can take up to like an hour just to set up the, the fabric on the rails and getting them, you know, straight and pinned. And so that, that part can take like an hour. Yeah. And then, I mean, then also I will practice designs before starting. So that can take, and then I send the client maybe drawings, you know, like on the iPad, like different options for designs. Yeah. Do you have a pin yourself? Uh, yes, all the time. Yes. <laughs> uh-huh. I do pin myself. I have actually cut one finger with a rotary cutter where I still can't feel that that fingertip. Um, this is common, I think, <laughs> for quilter. Yeah, 
I've heard about that. Well, walk me through the process of like for people who in our audience who like don't know anything about quilts, like walk me through the process of how do you set up that machine? The the long arming machine. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, you have to have the backing fabric. Um and pin that on the top rail and then and then roll it up and then pin it on another rail. And so we get the backing all good to go. Then the batting, then you have to get the batting um, basted down. And then, yeah, the top, uh, the top is a little trickier. You want to put it on straight and yeah, that goes on, a, on two different rails as well. And then almost ready to start. So how long does it take to like long arm the entire quilt? Yeah, so it depends. <laughs> a lot of answers in quilting is it depends um, on the size and the design. Um, I can do, you know, if it's just a simple all over, um, I can do an entire quilt in five hours. But also I've spent like up to two weeks on a, on a quilt. That one that was 34 blocks and different. Uh, so custom uh, quilting can take a little longer. So yeah, five. I would say five hours being the least for so me when, when do you find time to just sit there and quilt yourself yeah those are the weekends i i because i need a, a a big chunk of time to you know to get started and get going and to do a couple of dances here and there. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah and the weekends mainly sometimes in the mornings because i i have classes in the afternoon so uh, mornings are good also what social media means to you um well it it's been great it's how i've how i've learned a lot how i've learned about classes uh people um everything right so yeah it's and i feel less lonely um i've met i have some instagram friends so i call them my insta friends um and so yeah cuz other than that i have no other real contact that much um with 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 quilters <laughs> So it means a lot. Well, do, are your like uh, university friends? Are they surprised about your quilting obsession? Yes, yes, they are. And in fact, um, I find myself when I'm, you know, going to hang out with friends or to a party um, or with family here, all I want to talk about is quilting. And I know that it's annoying. And so I'm like, oh, so I have to find other. <laughs> So it is pretty much an obsession and um, yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be okay. Well, for you, like personally, when you think about quilt, is that art or is it craft? Good question. For me, it's art. Um, I, I believe it's art. And it's, I think especially the long arming is art because I am basically drawing on the surface of a, a quilt. Um, so definitely art, I think. Do you ever sleep covered with quilt? Like, do you, would you use it in practical question. terms? <laughs> Good question. Quilts should be used. Um, in fact, I use them sometimes on the couch, um, not on the beds because I have three dogs who are um, one, two of them do not shed, but one does. And so, no, I have not used them on the bed, <laughs> but they should be used. Yes. And in fact, I, I make a lot of quilts to donate. So um, a lot of my practice quilts, I donate um, here in Ecuador to, we have um, a lot of Venezuelan refugees on the, on the streets here. And so I donate, I make a lot of baby quilts and donate those. Do you have like a set, like a special quilt that you would never part with? Um, I don't know. Yes, right now I do have a, a small quilt that I made that I won a contest. Um, it was the first contest I had ever entered and the only contest so far I've entered. And I won like a, a $500 gift card. And, and it's the first quilt that I used um, rulers on. And so that one's pretty special to me because it was the first time I felt confident, like, oh, I did okay. Like I won best in show, what? Like, and so that one has, has been a confidence booster for me. But do you have like a des desire to continue competing? Like, do you have any ambition about where you're going with this? I would love to enter, yes, a show at some point. Um, 
And, and I know that it's it's hard to get accepted and that it, so I, I I do have a goal of 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 getting into either of, of course Quilcon, which would be amazing. I'm so upset that I can't go to Quilcon. It starts this it's this weekend in Atlanta and I'm not able to go because of of work and um and it, the flights are so expensive right now and I'm going to London at the end of March. So I kind of need that money for London. Um, and, and of course the, any of the, the quilt festivals and, and I'm, I would love to enter. So that is a goal. Yes, Irina, I will enter one this year. How Hopefully. about like some art show? Like, do you see yourself throwing an art show with your quilts? Um, I would love, so recently this past year, a friend of mine who is a quilter in Cuenca, Ecuador, she's from United States or Canada. Um, I, I do all the quilting on her quilts and she had a show at an art gallery. And so I got to go to the show. Um, and even though, even though I quilted them, they're her quilts, right? So it was her show, but it was so cool to go and see my, my quilting hanging on her quilts. Um, yeah. And, and also a, a, a woman who's a very well-known long armor, Julia Quiltoff had quilted a couple of her quilts. And so mine were next to, you know, I was, it was just an honor. And, and so, yeah, I would have to make my own uh, quilts to be in an art gallery, but it is on my vision board to be in an art gallery. It's <laughs> one day. Right. Well, let's talk a little bit about that because you do like a lot of work with long arm, but then the quilt itself belongs to somebody else. What's your feeling about it? Like how much of it is like you credit right. you, right? Right. It's a good question. Um, but it's it's really cool to quilt someone's someone's quilt for them and to make it, you know, how they they're how they envision it. Um, and so, yeah, you don't really get the credit um, for it, but I don't know. I think I'm okay with it. Like, I don't know. I want to be like the hype person, like the, you know, the person like hyping them up. Right. So I don't know. I'm still like trying to figure out my place. Um, but yeah, I'm okay with it. I well, feel like if you did your own quilt, would you want to do everything from the beginning till the end? Like, was that one of the reasons why you decided to do long arm? Because you wanted to be able to do the entire process? Yeah. Yeah. Because I was having trouble fitting um, quilts through a domestic machine. It's it's not easy. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, that's why I got the the hoop frame and and the this larger domestic and so then I really enjoyed it and so that's how I kind of started that I wanted to you know finish my own quilts but now I'm I'm like super okay with just doing the longer mean and um but yeah in order to meet some other goals though I need to start you know get back to making my own quilts too do you see yourself teaching quilts as well good question um I do have a I mean, I have 25 years as a teacher and a professor, so I do have a, a doctorate in education and a, and a master's in education. So like education is kind of my gig. Um, I had such a hor not a horrible experience, but on Zoom teaching during the pandemic, I feel like ooh PTSD from being on Zoom for two years. Um, <laughs> And so like, I don't want to teach quilting on Zoom. Like I just don't want to. So I don't know. Like, I feel like I would love to somehow be in the industry in the education field yes do you think there is like a market for people in ecuador to learn how to quilt like do you think there is enough interest in it not here no i don't um we do have a, a, some small uh, patchwork classes um but very small i'm talking like 10 10 people in the whole city of quito and 10 in another city but um no no market here i i don't know my goal is to keep improving and and and, and keep building on my skill set and then see what what is available i would have to travel or or i don't know i don't want to move back to the us <laughs> and that's well, kind tell, of where tell me about ecuador like what do you love about living there it is um where I live in Kumbaya, which is a valley of Quito, um, 70 degrees Fahrenheit um, every day, so year round. Um, so it's like spring every day. 
Um, the mountains are beautiful. I have this amazing view of the Andes. Um, the people are super nice. The cost of living is low. Um, the culture is 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 amazing. So I and I've built a life here. So I love I love living here. And I, I yeah. Um, I do want to tell you a little bit about the textile world in Ecuador because it still it still blows my mind that the textile um, industry here is is pretty cool, even though it's not quilting. <laughs> Um, so we have, we have, of course, weaving and, um, even my university has weaving classes and I'm like, Ooh, I would like to take that like weaving. Um, but I have not, um, we have a town called Otavalo, which is two hours from Quito that is famous for weaving, um, traditional weaving, you know, the, the women's, um, spin the wool, the men do the weaving and, and it's really cool. I have a few pieces, um, hanging that is, is awesome. We have like, for example, this, this scarf that I love is um, from Gualaseo, which is an hour outside of Cuenca. And I went to this town just to see this family that does ikat. Um, they make these makana shawls, which is like a natural dyed um, process that has UNESCO recognized as an intangible cultural heritage. So we got that going on. So we got this cool weaving. And I don't know if you've heard of the Panama hat. Yeah. The Panama hat is actually from Ecuador. This is um, an example of one, also a, um, a UNESCO recognized um, intangible cultural uh, heritage. Um, yeah, it's made from the palm-like plant and it's huge. The, the Panama hats, which are from Ecuador. Um, there's a lot of like theories why they call it the Panama hat, but um, they're super cool. I mean, they can cost anywhere from $20 to, I don't know, Charlie Sheen, the actor bought one for $25,000. So they're there. <laughs> I think mine was like, uh, this one was like a $50 hat. Somewhere in between. <laughs> yeah, somewhere in between that, right? Um, yeah, so we have some really cool and then the one last thing that I, I did take a class, I, I in my spare time, Irina, I love embroidery. It's one of the things that I tried um, and enjoyed. So like, can I do it? And, and do I enjoy it? And embroidery is something that I, I enjoy and I like to do it at night um, when I'm watching TV or something. But there's a town here called Zuleta and they're famous for their embroidery. And I took a class with a, 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 lady, a lady from Zuleta and um, it's really hard. <laughs> I think I need to take the class again. But I just want to show you what it looks like. I did not do this one. Um, this was bought. <laughs> but they they do this very special type That's of beer. So and yeah. And I love it. And I want to take the class again. Well, are you thinking of like incorporating different textiles and different uh, Ecuadorian fiber arts into your quilting perhaps? That is a good idea. Um, yes, I recently thought about uh, reaching out to the lady I took the the embroidery, the Zuleta embroidery class from. To I, I want I want to make her a quilt with with her own embroidery, <laughs> um, and so that's one one thing I want to do uh, soon. But I, I I am interested in 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 mixing some Ecuadorian textiles and and the embroidery and yeah I don't know about weaving though I'm not sure if that have would you work. ever. Have you ever considered writing a book about textiles of Ecuador? Good question. I have not. <laughs> Do you think people would I, be interested? I think people would be interesting because interested in that because I feel like there is a huge interest in cultures, in history. And this is something that represents the culture because like you can see the natural the plants of Ecuador in that embroidery right like you can see the story you can see what people were trying to teach each other through generations so I yeah. think it's like very important conversation to have I think that's a great idea thank you I'll think about it yes do it. totally and you in the unique um place because you know, it's, when you're coming as an outsider, you see more of things that people take for granted. They don't yeah. even think about it. For you, it's all new and interesting. And so you see it like 
you might find much more than a person who's surrounded by it all their lives. Right. That is so true. Yes. Well, have you ever tried hand piecing? Because like, if you like embroidery, right? You, like, I know. <laughs> I thought I would enjoy um, the English paper piecing. And then I also tried um, hand piecing a block once. And I was like, nope, don't enjoy it. <laughs> but for some reason, I do enjoy embroidery. Um, yeah, so I like to, I do, I do want to try everything to see, you know, can I do it? Do I, do I enjoy it? And I didn't enjoy it. I, I do enjoy the people who do it and <laughs> of course it's, it takes a long time well when you see other people's quilts right like when you went to that uh, exhibition let's say mm -hmm. how do you look at it do you look at it and find some new inspirations or do you look at it critically see mistakes that they made or how it can be improved like what's your view my first thing yeah I'm I'm always looking at the quilting. So if I'm to look at like this quilt here, I'm gonna look at all the, the quilting and not really the, the piecing first. I'm gonna look at the quilting because that's how I want to be inspired or you know, learn from. Um, but no, I'm not looking for I I'll notice a mistake or two, but no. <laughs> not well, too critically. Is there like difficult uh, designs that you wanna try but you feel like you're not ready yet to try? Yes. I mean, it took me, so for example, with feathers, feathers sounds pretty easy. Uh, no, I could barely draw the feathers and it took, it took a long time for me to get it. Like, it's almost like something has to click in your brain before it happens. And then when it happens, it's like, yes, it paid off. Like all the drawing and drawing and drawing pays off. Um, so yeah, that, that's one that I, I finally got though, but I took a, 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 I don't know, a three month class on feathers. <laughs> it was like a deep dive into feathers. And then now I'm taking this uh, botanical class. So it's a lot of leaves, a lot of flowers, and, and I'm still learning. And, and that's what I'm practicing right now is some, some flowers. Well, is there like a design that looks difficult, but is easy for you? Probably. Um, at first I thought like, you know, the little pebbles, just little circles, right? I thought those were going to be super, super hard. And um, then after I did a, a very large star quilt for a, a, the lady um, that had the show um, and the whole background was pebbles. And so I, I was like, oh, I can do this. It was easy. <laughs> Time consuming, but easy. Um, so that was one that was pretty, I thought was going to be hard, but it wasn't. Do you have a favorite? A favorite design. Mm, the, you know, I want my favorite design to be swirls, but it's not. In fact, <laughs> when someone's like, I want swirls, I'm like, okay. Like, I love the look of it, but I, I'm just not confident. And and so, yeah, it's, I want it to be my favorite, but it's not. Um, you know, if I get a quilt that they just want a simple uh, stipple or meander all over it, then I'm like, yes, because that's super easy. That's like the easiest, right? And and so that one's always fast and easy. Well, are you looking for like more, let's say like if it's your choice, right? If it's not the client's choice. So if you, the client just tells you like, surprise me. Yeah. What brings you more joy? Do you want to be challenged or do you like it more meditative, just mindless kind of thing? Yeah, so good question. Um, I... I do enjoy the challenge. So if I were to do it my way, it would be all just improv, graf what we like call is graffiti quilting. So just tons of different designs. Um, that would be what I would want to do. So then depending on time and, and money, then that, that plays a big factor. I think you should do an exhibition as part of your book tour, <laughs> <laughs> with Quilts of Ecuador telling the story. Yeah. Different um, fiber arts included in those. I mean, I totally can see that. That would be so unique and so you also. I love your ideas. <laughs> yes. On my book tour. <laughs> if if, if uh, that ever happens, I'm coming. So Okay, good. Yes. Some thought. 
I will send you an invite. Have you have you been to South America? No, not yet. So that's um, on my list of places to visit. Yes, I went to Peru recently and um, also a lot of culture, a lot of, I got to see a lot of uh, Incan textiles that blew my mind. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's very, it's like, it's, and it's, it's very interesting to see how it's like developed throughout the ages, because like I was talking uh, to Brazilian meters and they were telling me how it's like it was influenced by so many immigrants to Brazil that you can see like different techniques from like Europe. Yeah. Um, there's like part of it Portuguese knitting and then part of it is Italian knitting and how it's all like develops and evolves. So it's like very interesting to see that evolution, you know? Yeah, for sure. Well, I want to thank you for being a guest of my channel today. I really enjoyed chatting with you and getting to know a little bit more about long arm. <laughs> Thank you for asking me. It was definitely a pleasure. Thank you.